Travel is often cited as one of the most costly expenses for corporations and organizations. The need to meet customers, partners and employees in different locations is a prerequisite for conducting business. The global travel market is worth approximately 870 billion US dollars per year, of which 350 billion is business rather than personal, which means that around 40% of all travel-related emissions comes from business travel. But there is now an alternative to costly airline flights, hotel accommodation and wasted time. Telepresence aims to become a viable and greener alternative. One of the important things for people is that when they use visual communications, they want to have an experience that's as good as being there without the hassle of travel. And as good as being there means that all of the attributes of light and sound and the sense of presence um, have to be as good as that physical interaction. And that's what telepresence is really about. Companies can reduce their travel spend, reduce their carbon footprint and environmental impact. And what's more, they can improve their employees' productivity. It is certainly one of the key elements and the key aspects why global companies deploy telepresence today. Yeah? In globally the dispersed teams, yeah, you can basically get teams together literally within, within seconds without the need to you know, spend hours on, on, on a train or on a plane to travel there. Interoperability is one of the, the key aspects uh, what, what customers you know, are interested in today. And interoperability is really what we are able to offer in, in Halo today. Whether it is you know, a, across different networks, whether this is across you know, different endpoints from different vendors, basically Halo can offer it all. Collaborative teaming is another benefit of telepresence, as demonstrated by the Hollywood production company DreamWorks. There are all of these signs and signals that we send to one another in our uh, communicating with each other in this. And as I say, they are physical. So what this system does is it embraces that. It enhances that. In this room that we're in now, you actually could have four or five uh, unique conversations all taking place. And your ear would sort through them. In other words, the system itself allows that perfect audio collaboration of overlapping multiple conversations. Usually you have things that you wanted to discuss and sometimes they're computer data but sometimes you have a document that you, that you need to share. And we have the ability you know to manipulate and turn these images in any way in order to share them to magnify them you know if there's some detail that you want to you know talk about if you wanted to you could control this. Uh, from your location at the same time. I, I think it is that, that notion of really approaching it from not a technology solution, but really an experience. Really focusing on, on every nuance of the room in terms of the visual aesthetics of the room, the colors of the background. Things like lighting uh, are all intentional to create an experience of connectivity between two spaces. We really felt like HP was the right company to both enhance it and put a support model in place by which we can start to get you know, these rooms placed around the world. They really helped us get this to the final product that you're seeing here today. And I think um, what they understood is the implications of this for the business world. Welcome, Chicago, Singapore, and London. Everybody looks great. Yeah, this is amazing. We're seeing our levels of utilization and hundreds of hours per month. Um, across our customers and indeed across HP's own use. And what we're finding is that 60% of our customers have all bought additional Halo endpoints within five months of use, which is really a proof point that it's working for them in their environment. So we, we, we've used Halo extensively. We now have nearly 35 sites uh, in most of our major locations, uh, Beijing, Singapore, Helsinki, White Plains, here in the UK. Uh, it's used by all, all employees. During the last quarter, we had 8,000 hours of meetings take, take place on Halo, and that has a significant impact on reducing travel uh, and people's time. To support the projected growth in high-quality telepresence, the ICT networks need to be correctly configured with plenty of capacity. Only about 1 in 10 of the HD video conferences which start in HD end in HD. This means that 9 out of 10 actually go back to standard definition, or they have blotches on the screen, or the whole user experience is not great. This is, again, one area which the telecommunication industry and especially uh, high-performance networking leaders can further enable and make it better. So going forward, we can have 10 out of 10 video conferences in HD, start in HD, end in HD, and everything in between is also HD. 
Recognizing the damage business travel is doing to our climate, business leaders are increasingly looking for cost-effective alternatives. Australian operator Telstra practices what it preaches, and we spoke to the company's new CEO via a telepresence suite. It makes good business sense. And for us, it's twofold. One is we get productivity improvements and reduce our carbon footprint, but also we have a great opportunity to go and present it to our customers and say, hey, why don't you do it as well? And therefore, we're getting a double benefit along the way. And as I go and talk to government agencies, departments and our large customers, they're very, very interested. An organisation can usually get payback on a video conferencing system in under 12 months, just simply by the avoided tra business travel, um, you know, taxis, planes, road travel, hotel accommodation, plus you get a huge uh, payback in productivity. You know, in Australia, travelling between the major cities takes between six and eight hours to do the return trip, and by not travelling, you can actually bring those six to eight hours back into people's lives and back into the office. Uh, in Australia, we have obviously set targets for carbon emissions reduction, and we're moving into an environment probably in about a year where we'll do trading on those uh, carbon emissions. So it is a very important subject that is discussed around board tables and in the management team. So when you go in and say, hey, there's be business benefits and productivity benefits, and it's good for your customers, and we are doing something that's good for the environment, it's, uh, you're on a winner.